guys and gals. Welcome back to my show, Coffee with Lisa. So excited to have you here. Hello, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, everywhere that you are. I have got the unstoppable Tracy with me. Hi, Tracy. Hello, hello. Oh, it's such a pleasure to be with you, fellow Canadian. Yes, yes, absolutely. So we were just talking about uh, how excited we are that we are two Canadians live on the Coffee with Lisa show. One, today. Two. Now, Tracy, for those of you who don't know who you are, shame on them. You know, you've got a gold ca cast video going right now that has gone absolutely viral. You've got 8 million people watching. Yay! You gotta be able to go to the washroom by yourself. There's one teacher and 30 kindergarten kids. How can she manage Tracy as a four-way amputee? So she counter-offered. She said, how about you try Tracy? Just for one eight million in like eight days. That's crazy. That's like a million a day. That gives me what? like serious goosebumps. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, I, I, how did that all come about? Let's hear you know, for those of you who don't know who you are, let's start with that first. Let's talk okay. about your story. I mean, it is an amazing story. Let's start from the beginning. Right from the beginning. And so do you want me to reveal the gold cast video or is that a go find and enjoy that story outside? I think that's a go find. I think people have to go okay. to gold cast to find that video. But and, let's and, talk about your story for those of you who don't know who you are. Yes. Well, you know, so my story, my 24 month recent story is that life has blown up and this goal cast, you know, 8 million beers in 8 days is really indicative of what's happened the last 24 months. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it's really who you surround yourself with is who you become. Yes. And I made a mission. You know, I was in a really tough place. I had just finished, you know, I'd spent my life devoted to many, many years, the Paralympic trials for yeah. Rio 2016. Yeah. Uh, and it was huge. And I, it was like significant. It made a difference to many, many sailors, able-bodied and with a disability. All the Olympians and Paralympians, every single one that was in the Paralympics and the Olympics in Rio, you know, me and a partner in crime, Magnus Ligidal, we had touched every single boat. You know, so I knew that I'd made an impact to the Rio 2016. But my initial goal, what you focus on grows, was to be in the Paralympics in Rio. Yeah. And so I was devastated for a little while when I wasn't the one in there. And it took me a bit to realize that, holy cow, Tracy, you went bigger than you, Tracy, unstoppable Tracy. And I ended up being a part of international sailing, sailing for people who are able-bodied, people with disabilities. And so it was much bigger than myself. So I have to get over myself. But there was a couple months in there when Rio happened. It was really tough because many, many years with this focused goal of going. Yeah. And I did. Well, and, and for so, people who are, are watching, they, who don't know who you are, they need to know that you have no hands and no, no feet. No legs. Like no it's legs. above. Yeah. yeah. It's a, I have little stumps from my hips, uh, but I don't have any knees. So I'm missing my left arm and I'm missing my right and left leg. Uh, but on the right side, I do have an arm, but no hand. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you for the context. I forget whether people can see me or just hear me. Exactly, exactly. And, yes. and I recently saw a picture of you climbing a mountain without yes. a prosthesis. I mean, That's come on, right. seriously. I left my legs in Kathmandu. Yes, and I'm <laughs> Captain Ship. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Who, who in the world can say that? Hey, like who, I left my legs in Kathmandu. <laughs> you know, and and a lot of us, we try to start a business, or we want to make a difference for our kids, or we want to make a difference in our health, and we go for it. And sometimes we're like, we're faced with what seems like insurmountable, out of my hands, I cannot control. And we, we, we learn the valuable lesson of affect the things we can change and let go of what we can't change. But, you know, 
climbing the Himalayas with my legs on just wasn't working. Yeah. And and it wasn't yeah. effective. And and of course, all you able-bodied people, you all figured I would be more effective with my legs on because it's what made sense to you. Yeah. But the reality yeah. was climbing the Himalayas was much better with my legs off. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't know unless you try. Well, and you know, starting a business. And that is such a good lesson because um, if you don't, you know, I tell my daughters all the time. I said. You know, I would rather see you fail miserably at something yeah. than not try at all because not trying, that's the failure in life. Yes. Like, and so that's so true. And 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 fail miserably at say climbing the Himalayas. Well, I went there and I really tried and I know I gave it my all. Yeah. But I it wasn't even stopping there. Like failure isn't the failing miserably. Failure is when you stop trying, yeah. right? And so just like the Himalayas, I just had to keep going at it until I figured out a way. Yeah. And that messed out my legs. Or when I was skiing, I'm a downhill skier, and I got a bronze medal in a Canadian competition. Yeah. And when I started skiing, I was in the trees like 12 times before I actually didn't end up in the trees, right? And well, so, I, can, I can totally appreciate that. I used to be a downhill racer and an instructor. So um, love skiing, love skiing. Yeah, and can yeah. appreciate people with legs have astronomical hurdles to come over to learn how to ski. Never mind having prosthesis to work with skiing. I mean, that's unbelievable. And, and most of the amputees, they're one-legged and they ditch their leg too. A lot of people that acquire their injury, they try to learn to ski or ski again with their prosthetic. Yeah. And then there's some fellow amputees and like, yeah, I tried that. Skiing is much better with no legs, right? Like it's just yeah. like an able-bodied mindset. And the, and the trick was, though, with no legs, how was I going to do it? Yeah. Right? There was yeah. the one leg. Yeah. And sit skiers, people who are paralyzed or have no legs, they have their hands. So they use a sit ski and they use outriggers. Yeah. But that wasn't yeah. going to work for me. But, you know, you embrace the possibility yes. that yeah. you can do it. Yeah. And I had no idea how I was going to ski. No idea. But what I did is I went there knowing it was possible. We didn't know how. And sometimes you start a business or you start a conversation with your teenager or, you you know, you start a conversation with your neighbor about splitting the cost of a fence maybe, right? Like yeah. whatever yeah. it might be. Whatever business level or personal level or not for profit, you're trying to fundraise level and you feel like, oh, I've gotten so many no's. Do I try one more time? And I had no idea how I would ski with no legs and no hands based on everybody else that skis either with the sit ski or outriggers. Yeah. I still went. I still embraced the possibility I could do it. And what I ended up doing and I wouldn't have figured it out from my couch at home. I had to get out there. I had to believe I would, could do it, even though I didn't know how, and jump. And I got out there, and my ski instructor had size 12 men's ski boots. And I remember sitting next to him on the bench in the ski lodge and, and having this wacky idea. And like, oh, my gosh, his, his calves on his legs are so huge that my thighs could fit in his ski boots. Yeah. And that's what we did. We put my thighs in men's ski boots backwards. Back? And this started me to back, well, backwards, because in skiing, you guys do like a duck squat. You're bending your knees so that your your shoulders are over the tips of your skis, yep. right? You yep. forward. forward. Yep. And I had the skis, the let the boots on forwards. It had me leaning forward too much. Uh, totally makes sense. So when they're backwards, I could stick my bum back and I could be in more of a duck squat control position to pull my shoulders forward. And so, but I sent a lot of other people in the trees looking at me with my backwards ski boots because I have no feet. So it didn't matter which way the boots were facing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, my That's toes, interesting. Right? Um, coming because I am a ski instructor, so. Did your instructor come up with that idea or did you guys just play around? Like, how did that all come about? Because that takes a mindset, like a re as an instructor, that would, I would have to reverse engineer how somebody, like, that would be a challenge. Yes, right. 
And it's really nothing about us without us. Yeah. I knew nothing about skiing, and you're a ski instructor, but I know my body and what it can do. Yeah. And so I needed to be part of the conversation about how to teach myself to ski, but I really needed your instructor knowledge, right? Like, I, just like in a skier, I wanted to pull back on the skis, right? I wanted to not be over my tips. And so I needed to be forward and I needed your lessons to do that. Yeah. And I needed to be shouted at in a loving way, turn, 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 turn. <laughs> yeah. But like, you know, lots of, of uh, new skiers is the straight. And then, and then when you're learning to ski a little bit older, like the little ones just want to go head first down the hill, yeah. right? But I was a little older, so I was like, I don't want to go down that hill. So I was going straight, 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 straight into the tree, right? I was going across the hill. And he'd get me out of the trees and turn me around. He'd be like, turn, turn, turn. And I'd be you like. got the pizza slice. Make a pizza right. slice. <laughs> exactly. But I have no ankles and no knees. Yeah. So pizza slice was really tricky. So we were trying pizza slice, but the boots would tore. Yeah. And this is too involved for our listeners that are not skiers. Yes. But the point is, is that you know you best. Yeah. And then for people, there are. Subject matter experts, high performance people. Like I really, you know, how come in sport we know to get that high performance instructor to do the pizza slice and to educate about turn and to educate about shoulders forward, yeah. you know, and I did that in sailing, right? I got the high performance coach so that I could be a world cup sailor where I am beating able bodied men with their arms and their legs. It's a male dominated sport. Yeah. I was in this World Cup regatta in Melbourne, Australia. There were about 30 sailors. Approximately 27 of them were men. And there was only three women. Yeah. And all of them had their hands and their legs. Yeah. Except well, me. And I, th I think, you know, it's interesting that you say that about business. Because I think so many businesses, and it doesn't matter if you're a startup or you're in the C-suite and you've got a $100 million business. You still need an, to channel those experts that have the information and see through that different lens than you do so yeah. that you can combine that information to go compel forward. Yes. And how can we get that in, like when we, put, when we send our kids to say gymnastics for a teacher, we're not going to teach them gymnastics because we don't do gymnastics and we couldn't imagine them doing a backflip on a balance beam if we've never done it, right? We, we hand it off to somebody or ourselves if we do sport, but we just don't give ourselves that outside perspective in business. You know, Tiger Woods, his coach, he's a famous golfer. Yep. His coach does not outperform him in a golf game, but his coach is what you said. He sees outside himself. Right, if Tiger's in the middle of a swing, he can't notice that he didn't pull back further. Yeah. Right, he feels yeah. like he is pulling back further. Whereas a coach outside of, he can see things that Tiger can't see in his swing because he's in the middle of it. Yeah. It's yeah. so funny. Right. And it's that coach's responsibility to hold you accountable to those things that are required and necessary in order to get you to that next level. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was when you said, tell me about yourself. And I started to spin off into like the last 24 months have been viral, like the 8 million on Goldcast. Yeah. What happened is I got myself a fabulous high performance business coach like yourself. Someone like you that could see outside of me. Yeah. And, and I, instead of struggling through those, like, oh my gosh, woes me, I'm not in Rio. And then I'm like, forget this. It's January, like it is right now for all of us. I want a different year. I don't want my last three months, what you focus on grows. And I wanted to focus on thriving. So what's my new goal? I needed a new goal because I had been driven towards Rio. Yeah. And I'm like, oh. yeah. and what I'd learned in my fundraising was making a difference for others. I realized in the sailing world, I made a difference to many people bigger than I made a difference for myself even. Yeah. And I realized yeah. in my fundraising effort, being on stage, like I was looking to raise money for my boat, but being on stage, people in the audience were coming up to me and saying, you don't know this and I don't want you to share this with anybody, but I was feeling suicidal and you've turned me around or 
you don't know this, but I've been promising to publish my book for 10 years and I'm going to do it today. Yep. Right. And, and yeah. all these people were driven to have a better version of themselves. And I just wanted to raise money for my boat. Right. Like this is all I was doing in my, and I realized. Did you raise your money for your boat? I, well, I raised what I needed, but not, not, not a boat for me. I, you know, sometimes we have to let go of what's yeah. the ultimate goal yeah. was to train in a boat. And so I thought I needed to buy a boat, but I raised money to be able to do the training. And I was able to raise money for Team Paradise, a Paralympic mm -hmm. sports club that made a difference for many, many people around the world, which was bigger than me. Yeah. So I yeah. didn't get a boat, but Team Paradise got boats and I could use Team Paradise's boat. <laughs> so you did get a boat in the end. <laughs> I got a boat in the end and a boat that like a dozen other international sailors with disabilities use and train in and practice in. And so it was better than me getting a boat. I got a boat for many, many people. Yeah. It's amazing life. how when you, when you start on a mission in life, thinking that your end goal or the result of that mission is one thing, and it ends up being something so much bigger than you ever imagined it could be. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I think people need to hear that. I think people need to realize that it is okay to start a mission, to start something, anything. Yeah. It doesn't matter what yeah. it is. Just start it. And you'll be pleasantly surprised at the adjacent possibilities and the opportunities that could result from that. Yes. Like the yeah. skiing story. I didn't know how I would ski. You don't know how your future is going to go, but you know in your head you really, really want to be a coach too, or you really want to uh, start a YouTube channel, or you really want to write a book. Uh, and I, I need to understand your listeners a little bit better too. Who's listening to us right now? Who are the kind of people that... Yeah, so it's all kinds of people, all kinds of professionals, all kinds of experts, you know, moms, dads, children, you know, everybody will be listening to this. And I think... Nice. It doesn't matter where you are in life. I think that's the biggest lesson, Tracy, that you yeah. teach everybody is it just doesn't matter where you are in life or what you have or what you don't have. You have just got to go for it. Yes. Yeah. And I went for it with the backwards ski boots, but I didn't know that on a couch. Yes. Right. Sometimes that fear of the unknown, yeah. you know, we have to push ourselves out of our comfort zone. All and, it, and, you know, the trees sound scary to some people. The reality is it was hilarious. <laughs> I had the, best, the snow was soft. I got to roll around in the bushes with a very handsome man. You know, it was not all. What could a woman all. ask for? You know, I mean, maybe I was wiping out in the trees subconsciously just to roll around with him some more. I don't know, right? <laughs> yeah, well, you're getting lots of likes and, and thumbs up on that one. So oh, you, that's so funny. You're not only extremely successful in life and motivated in life, but... And and it's the it's the beginning of the new year, 2019, and I recently just did a video about this, how everybody's setting all these goals and objectives, and, and it makes me frustrated every year, and I'll tell you why. Because why are you waiting for one day in the year to do that? You should be doing that throughout the whole year, not just one day, and try to hold yourself accountable. And if you can hold yourself accountable, then you need to, like you said, surround yourself with people that will hold you accountable throughout the whole year, not just that one day, not just that no. one goal. You know, we, we, you know, as an entrepreneur, we want to individually, you know, positively, selfishly, read recent podcasts yeah. they did, positively, selfishly want to individually be an entrepreneur and launch and be successful so that we can be philanthropic and make a difference for others, either others in our yeah. family or others in our community or others in the world, yeah. right? Yeah. We need the oxygen first before we put the mask on somebody else, right? Yeah. That airplane yeah. message. You need to take care of yourself before you're able to make a difference for others. You need to, uh, money isn't a bad thing. You, you need it to be able to make a difference. Uh, you but know what? That, That's so true. You know, and, and lots of highly successful people get hammered all the time by haters saying oh why do you you know why do you buy a lamborghini why do you buy a rolex but they don't realize all the other impactful things that those successful people do that they might not necessarily speak out about and so i think it's really important yes you need money to have impact there's no question yeah. 
but uh, and and uh, you know often they wear that Rolex so that they can inspire another couple of people that wear Rolexes yes and they won't yeah. speak to their listening they won't tap into that income revenue stream unless they look the part you know who you surround yourself with is who you become absolutely and so that's those those applicant affluent circles there's not very many of them it's a very small pot yes. and there's a massive group of us so so you know the only thing stopping you from being a millionaire you right and right. And, and, and you can be philanthropic because yeah. but you need to be who you surround yourself with if you're around people that are succeeding then you're going to succeed too and i think and it's i think about, it's really important yes yeah, surround yourself with smart people you know everybody says um you know i like to think a little bit differently when it comes to this you know surround yeah. yourself with people who are always smarter in the room than you and they say that all the time but I don't necessarily believe that because I do believe that we can learn from anybody and there's a lesson in every single person regardless of how successful or how smart they are. So I think I like to change that a little bit to say it's not about being you know, the stupidest person in the room with smarter people. It's about taking advantage of the conversations and asking the right questions in the room. And you, the lesson that you learn for you might not even be the lesson the other person's teaching. Exactly. It, it, it spins off like my ski instructor was not teaching me to use backwards boots. Yes. That was my idea. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And 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 it wasn't. He even didn't. Even, me, none of us thought of putting my thighs in the boots. It just took sitting there on the bench in the room to yeah. see. Like, yeah. like, oh, here's this opening. Yeah. And I fit in it. Yeah. And when you're around people, whatever income level and whatever smart level yeah. is when you're around, just keep looking for those openings where you fit in. Exactly. So that you fit into a possibility that works for you. It's just like a brainstorming, mind mapping, solution finding, right? It's just a new if you do what you've always done, you get what you've always got. Exactly. And sometimes Right. And, yep. and so if you drive yeah. to work every day or you drive to the grocery store every day, uh, going a certain route, try this, disrupt your norm and try driving to the grocery store, even if it's a longer way, a different way. Yeah. And yeah. what you'll notice is that you'll think of different things for your business or for your conversation with your children or for that goal that you're aiming for, or when you're trying to think of your goals for next week, like if you drive to the grocery store a different way, what I found is when I do things differently, new ideas come. Whereas when I drive the same way all the time, that I, I, I'm in automatic pilot mode and those ideas don't come. Yeah, and so it, I love that idea that you said that smart isn't about, you know, someone with a PhD and you might not even have a, a bachelor. It's not that kind of smart. It's just smartly listening to where you can create new ideas. Yeah, and so it comes back to that skiing, right? I don't I don't ski with backwards boots now. I didn't get a bronze medal with backwards ski boots. Yeah. But I did get on the ski hill. I did learn how to ski with the backwards ski boots. And I did get started because you don't you don't start with the two thousand five hundred dollar ski legs. <laughs> when you're a beginner, right? No one's going to give you that. We don't even know what those legs need to look like for me to learn to ski, yeah. right? So, yeah. so the back boots, making it work, was about getting started and seeing what I really needed to get better, yeah. right? You get started and then you learn and say, you know, well, what would be really great is if there was a way, you know, these boots are really heavy. If we could attach me to the skis that didn't involve a boot. You know, like, does it, right? And all we could think about is, well, boot bindings are for boots. Yeah. But, of course, you could do a boot, a boot foot plate that's lighter and doesn't have the whole weight of the boot. So maybe we don't need that, right? Well, and, then and, you, so you, and you realized what was possible, and then you manipulated yeah. what you needed in order to continue forward. And I think that, and that's important, to, whether it's a ski boot or it's business or your marketing for your business. And the other thing too that really truly that we haven't talked about is what that ski instructor learned from that experience. Here's the expert and he's learned something as well. And so 
you know, whether you're, it doesn't matter that you're the expert, there's always something more to learn. He, yeah. you know, you taught him, I would suspect if I was, if I was him, I know that I would have learned very valuable lessons out of that engagement and that experience with you. And so learning okay. happens on both sides of the fence all the time. And your, your message of you have to be open to that opportunity is so important. Yes. And, and, and take risks. Yeah. How do you know unless you try? And fear, I wasn't, people are like, well, I'm not as courageous as you. People think I did that without fear. Oh, you were probably parent, you were probably, you were probably petrified and so was the instructor. Yeah, he sure was. Yeah. Well, and there was even a point where he was like, no one would judge you if you determined that this wasn't working for you. Yeah. Right? There was a point where that was said. And, and when I was sailing, you know, that first summer, I kept falling out of the boat. And people said, you know, maybe, because I don't have any legs on, right? And yeah, so I'm yeah. all top heavy. I'm all top body. Yeah. And yeah. they realized, you know, every time the boat would heal or a bit of wind would come, I would topple out because there was no legs to hold me in. I was so top heavy. I just got a question, <laughs> Tracy. Somebody wants to know, how did you lose your legs and your arms? Oh, what a good question. Thank you for where we never even got there. No. The two of us are just so chatty Cathy that we like, oh, we forgot some of the basics. Yes. <laughs> so I was born this way. They don't know why my arms and legs didn't grow. I'm the only one in my family, my sister, mom, dad, great grandparents, great, great, great grandparents, all my cousins, all my niece and nephew after me. You know, no one before or after me was an amputee. Uh, but I also know that I was born exactly the way for my, my belief is God, that God intended. You know, we all have different beliefs yeah. and, and whatever yours is too. I believe I'm exactly the way I was meant to be. No one else in my family uh, climbs, never mind the Himalayas, sails. No one else skis. No one else scuba dives, no one else flies airplanes, no one else kayaks, no one else is like a big massive swimmer like me. And that's and why I can you're called unstoppable because somewhere, yes. regardless of what you believe, whether it's God or whatever you believe, believe yeah. that you needed to come to this world to be unstoppable and teach people that they could be that way too. Yes, if I can do it. No arms, no legs. Yeah. You no can excuses. do it. No excuses. No excuses. No. So here's the tough love, right? No excuses. But it's not always. You're not always this vibrant, excited person because we are all human. And so yeah. you've had challenges in your life. You've had times, I'm positive, not putting yeah. words in your mouth, where you have curled up on that bed and, you know, in the fetal position and didn't want to get out of bed that day. So what motivates you every day to get up? What's your why, Tracy? Oh, unstoppable you, right? That's what, that's the light bulb that went off for me. We started to talk about how this exponential year of 24 months, right? I, I did, I had three months after Rio of being very, uh, like not feeling like a valuable contributor to others or to myself yeah. and what's my goal yeah. and not motivated. Like it was like, okay, just not motivated uh, to to even go look for something. I didn't have a why. I didn't have a goal. So uh, and then I got, I got some kind of Facebook message about mega speaker. It said, you know, do you want to be a mega speaker? And then and and it was the first time in like three months where my heart kind of was like, oh yeah, right. And 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 I and and it was because when I was doing speaking for fundraising for Team Paradise, it was so fulfilling. All those people afterwards having their dreams met because they heard me, yeah. right? If yeah. you can do it, I can do it. No excuses, no limits, right? They yeah. they were motivated. Yeah. I saw the mega speaker Facebook post. I'm like, oh, yeah, that, that, I could see that. I feel like going to that. And it was the first thing I felt like going to. And it was because I enjoyed that feeling when people talked to me afterwards. Yeah. And I went to the day. And I ended up signing up with an incredible man. His name is JT Fox. And I had this incredible 24 months and, and growing, right? Like, obviously, it's still going, not a million a day. Yeah, exactly. Who, who can yes. do that? <laughs> yeah. 
And so he gave me this insight into launching the speaker. And I gave me the insight into realizing what motivates me is unstoppable others. Yeah. What motivated yeah. me, if I couldn't do it for me right now, I, I wanted to do it for others. Yeah. But one of the yeah. things I learned in this journey of the 24 months is I can't be 3,000% unselfish to others because if I don't have my rent paid and if I don't take care of my health and I don't care take care of uh, my home and the car to drive to these events where I could make a difference for somebody else I can't make a difference for other people yeah. and Absolutely. so that was also part but that was my original why and still my why and, and he said like and he was talking to a room full of hundreds of people but I went there listening like you said what what is the smart what is the lesson and what he's saying as it applies to me yeah. and he was telling yeah. a room full of people before i signed up for the one-on-one -on -one coaching with him is he said write a book you know and 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 as an example he said what do all the speakers do or if you want to be an athlete or you want to be a, a shoe salesman what do the really successful shoe salesmen do yeah what do the really speaker successful people do they've written a book it's a bestseller and they've done a TEDx and they have a speaker bureau so it's like so if you want to be a speaker write a book and so that was January 27th on February 1st I took a picture that I had and I put an unstoppable Tracy it started I had 27 different book covers but the first cover said unstoppable Tracy and I took a picture and I put it up on Facebook and I said I'm thinking of writing a book and I had 700 friends on Facebook. It turned into 5,000 in no time. <laughs> I sold 3,000 copies of that book before I'd even wrote it. Like it just went like, okay, so now I, I, did, I didn't say I was writing it. I said, what do you think? Tracy, and it, and it was I want to interrupt you only because people need to realize, and it happens all the time with online courses as well. Because as you know, I have a company, we position online courses for, for learning, right? And you don't, what people don't realize, and every time that I speak with an expert like yourself and others, is that, oh, well, I need an online course in order to get it approved for continuing education in order to go to market. No, you don't. No. You need the concept. Build yeah. it and they will come. Is yeah. that the reality? It's think about it, tell people about it, they'll come and then build it for them. You don't have to have it in order to do it. No. And that's exactly what happened. What did people want? They're like, oh my gosh, people need to hear your shoelace kindergarten story. Yeah. Right? yeah. People need to hear your backwards boot skiing story. Yeah. We, we and they they told me which chapters to write yeah but the other yeah. piece that they and I wrote the book and it was like November 1st and it was with the publisher but the other thing that my high performance coach did and what people were telling me all along but I just wasn't was listening so well mm -hmm. but when I was really listening and I finally figured out I got out of myself and that fear of writing the book and not being a, I'm not I have no hands I am not a writer I do not like typing or writing That's what ghost writers are for yeah, right. Ghost writer, yeah. but it, no income stream for like many years as an athlete. So, so what do you do? And now it's just an excuse. I found income. I found ways to fund these things or to barter yeah. services and to do things for people. I, uh, it's interesting you say find a way because I just finished reading Merrill Hodges' book, and Merrill Hodges uh, was uh, a football player, and his first book that he wrote was Find a Way, and it was exactly that. It was a, it was his life story about how he had found a way to professional football and yeah. you know all the challenges that he faced and what have you but it is it's find a way there's always a way to do something I know like, I had a meeting with my marketing team here not too long ago and you know frustrated over some of the things that was happening with our marketing and it and it was really one of the team members said you know well Lisa we've 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 solved the problem and I'm like no we haven't solved the problem and he said yes we have because we found out that didn't work. So we just keep yeah. going and finding out the right chemistry, if you will, and that will be the the answer to this the problem. 
And so it is, it's just find a way and keep going and persevering until you find a way. And learning yeah. has a lot to do with that. And I know because you're at the level of success that you're at, I want to ask you, how do you learn? What do you do? Do you do books? Do you online training? Like what do you use as your vehicle to learning to be better? I think it really starts on like what you focus on grows. Yeah. Right. I think that goal driven and be goal driven, you know, do your backwards planning of your end goal. Yeah. But as you say, do it every day, yeah. do it every do it every month. Right. Yeah. Your goal envisioning for your day, your week, your month all the time. And so yeah. what you focus on goes. So sometimes when you're wanting to learn and we just take it all in and it gets to be a smorgasbord of so much stuff. But when you know what. So like in sailing, if I'm sailing to that top mark or if I'm skiing around that gate, I don't to the first gate in front of me my ski coach and my sailing coach both say look ahead to your gate yeah. so when I'm on my start line I'm not really looking at my start line I'm more so looking at my top mark or I'm looking at two gates ahead on my ski hill and so then I know what is it that I need to learn yeah to get around that and then with that kind of okay I, I feel like I'm missing this or I want more of that find a way yeah. for example and feeling like well I feel like I'm, I've, I'm like I don't have money or this and I don't know how I don't know how and I find myself I don't know how I don't know how and I don't have money to ask for anything how that means you need to find a way and so that means the books you're looking for are are like unstoppable you where we talk about embrace possibility that you will find a way and you don't know how but you get started and you're not going to figure out backwards ski boots on a couch you're not going to figure out how to find a way on your computer surfing all the time right you need to get out there and be around other people and disrupt your norm drive to the grocery store different ways surround yourself go to events yeah. take online training listen to cds in your car exactly. and that and listen to those CDs. I, I was I was the first six months and still now. And I still listen to those same CDs. So I got like a bunch of CD learning that January 27th. And I listened to them in my car everywhere I went. And I just kept yeah. listening to how that applies to me and what could I do. Yeah, right? absolutely. And, There's and so then much applied. today with the internet and with social media and podcasts and I mean, there is absolutely no excuse for you not to find the right information. But where people yeah. do run into a rabbit hole is actually learning from people who have, haven't walked the talk. And so that's yeah. really important too, is being yeah. educated right. about who you're listening to, what you're learning, and making sure that those people who are teaching you actually have done it themselves and practice it every single day. That's yeah. 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 Demonstrated success. Yeah. Demonstrated success. Not yeah. talking about success. Like yeah. like a football player. Like yeah. an unstop like a Lisa that have demonstrated success stories to talk about. Uh, not just here's five steps to outperforming ten times your profit. That's a fabulous and but if Lisa says here's five steps to outperforming your profit then I would listen because Lisa has applied and demonstrated. Yeah. Yeah. It's so important. It, like it. And I hear it all the time from professionals who say, you know, well, you know, so, uh, I'll, I'll be talking to an expert who wants to become part of the faculty at extra credits. And now they'll, they'll say, Oh, well, I am the number one. And this happened to me. I'm the number one expert on LinkedIn. Okay. So you're the number one expert on LinkedIn. Tell me, how did you become the number one expert on LinkedIn? Well, I have a client that told me, well, I'm sorry, but the fact that your client told you you're the number one expert isn't proof of your concepts. You need to be actually living it, entitling it and showing people the results. And that's really important. Like your coach who actually is results driven with you. That's, you know, invaluable when you have somebody that you're trying to get a bigger performance uh, achievement from and help from, right? Yeah. And, and there, you know, and it isn't, you know, these all, all these things contributed to me getting to my end goal. For example, mine was the, the big stages to make a bigger difference. Yeah. And doing the book, but, and not just a bestseller book, and not just a bestseller book on Amazon, but a bestseller book with my publisher in Canada and internationally. Yeah. And getting a TEDx and then Goldcast 
which is, you know, look at that 8 million views. But there is like a number one international speaker in LA opening for John Travolta. There were 72 countries, I believe, that were there. There were 115 speakers in those five days and became number one mega success speaker. Or, or John Maxwell yeah. is a really yeah. renowned leader. And there are, there's 170 countries involved in the John Maxwell family. Yeah. And, and making it to the top 10 of the trans, num, of the transformational leaders flying down there, making it to the top four of the transformational leaders. And then, and all of that time, most of the people in that pool of a top 100, top 10, top four, all men, right? And so there were three men on that stage with me. And, and, and three of them were in pretty famous circles. Yeah, like yeah. the guy that won overall was a big fancy football player, Randy. And, and I am Tracy, who grew up in affordable housing in Scarborough, not even big downtown Toronto. Yeah. Right? Well, and no, no legs. Yeah, and a I think it's important for people to realize that those people on the stage, you and all the other men that were on the stage, didn't get there because they sat on the couch. They got there because they work their asses off. Like you work your, you know, okay. nobody gets, it's not a silver spoon. And, and mm -hmm. regardless of what's social and, you know, all the media shows, it is a lot of work. It's a lot of tears. I mean, yep. a lot of curled up in bed, not wanting to get out of bed, pushing yourself to be unstoppable in order oh. to get that level of success. So yeah. I think, you know, when you have, for those people who are watching and you have those bad days in your business or in your life or whatever it happens to be, you still got to get out of bed and you might not put a smile on your face, but you still got to do the work. Um, and yeah. that's really important. Surrounding your palace with great people, social, like you talked about earlier, um, social media is what compelled you to get out of, out of bed that particular day and keep going. Wow. Now that's the, that's the positive power of social media. You know, not yes. the, the negative power, but the positive power. So that's so important. So and you it, do and a lot of training. I heart feeling. Yeah. And you do a lot of, like you've trained for Uber. You've trained Air Canada. Like you have done a lot of leadership training. So if anybody's out there watching and is looking for a leadership trainer and expert, Unstoppable no. Gracie's and the lady. Female. Yep. Female global leader, right? Out of 170 countries with the John Maxwell team, transformational leader. Yeah. You know, what was, so, so you know, what are you going to create an online course, Tracy, that we can bring into the extra credits world? I'd love that, my friend. Let's you and I work together and make that happen. Absolutely. That would, absolutely. So you heard it here, folks. There's going to be an all you, there's no excuse for you not to learn from Tracy 24, seven, 365 days a year coming soon. No. <laughs> that's right and i'm in partnership with a man uh um michael ballard uh, as well and then this just came out of of this past week's festivities uh very what recently what are you doing with michael he's he's also about you know leadership and the positivity of power and he has he does leadership development with uh fortune 500 companies but he has a savviness with cameras and so I had the marketing and the branding and the reach of, yeah. for example, yeah. 8 million new people on yeah. top of yeah. the massive world before. And he got the camera. So, and, and, and some savviness. So, uh, and educated. He's not just a camera person, but he's educated in the world that I'm interested in making a difference. Yeah. So he, he, we, we just, so we can bring, we can complement each other. Right. This is what you do yeah. when you're trying to figure out how to make a way. Who is somebody that you can partner with and add skills to and they can partner with and add skills to you where you're mutually beneficial. It's no good reaching out to Lisa or to me. And, and because we're both 24 seven, we're both working our butts off yeah. to live the life that we're living and we love it. And so, you know, there is a wellness to it, but the life satisfaction comes from driving the results. And so sometimes and, and, and making an impact, at, at, I mean, that is just, this what gets me up every single morning is if I can teach and learn, learn myself something new, 
uh, but teach somebody else something new every day. That's what gets me out of bed. You know, yeah. money, money creates impact. So we all need money. So that's important too. And, uh, but it's about the impact. Yeah. Yes. It is about the impact. Yeah. Uh, and it's not just words. It's no. Execution. It is execution. And, and, you know, there's a lot of wellness and balance out there. And I, and I believe in those messages. But I tell you, making an impact and making a difference in somebody's life energizes me far more than eight hours sleep. Yeah. So yeah. sometimes. Well, you don't sleep eight hours. I know you don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> Neither do I. I My friends yeah, bug me all I, the time. They'll say, what? You were up at four in the morning? I'm like, three in the morning? Yeah, because I had an idea and I couldn't stop it. So I had to get oh. up and implement it. Did I tell you that, or are you just taking an educated guess? Because that's, no, that's exactly what I do, what I, literally. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. And there are people in my world that will attest to that too. Uh, and there's a lot of people in my world that say, "Go to bed, go to bed." And like, you do need to watch, right? But yes. you you also yeah. need to implement that idea to yeah. to thrive, and that that's what it takes. But so, if we can come back to almost like the beginning story and the. Uh, some of the middle piece is about who you surround yourself with, who you become. And it doesn't mean that, that, that there, you know, it's anybody can give you motivation, yeah. but a little yeah. story about climbing in the Himalayas. And, and, and when I first learned to climb in Thunder Bay, I, I, without we're bound the first time ever, I eventually became an instructor teacher, but I first time ever doing out we're bound. And I was rappelling off of this cliff and, uh, and no arms, no legs and hanging off of this rappel line. And I stopped dead hanging there when my knees, when my stump, right? They're not even like real knees. What I'm calling my knees, when my stump end left the cliff and I was just dangling in midair on this rappel line, frozen in fear. And I felt like some of you feel right now all alone. Yeah. You feel like. Whatever they're saying, sure, that's fine and dandy, but I am all alone in this journey. I have to do this by myself. There isn't anybody else. My family don't support it or they don't see it or this is the only yeah. thing I'm motivated by or I'm totally motivated, but people think it's unrealistic. Yeah. Right? Yeah. People yeah. Yeah. Feel all alone. Yeah. People thought it was unrealistic, four-way amputee, no hands, no legs. They're going to go repelling and outward bound, right? And I was feeling all alone and I felt this added burden of, Everybody's going to be, I told you so, when I fail. And here I am frozen in fear, hanging off this cliff when my stump left the rock cliff edge. And up above, someone shouts, Tracy. And of course, I wasn't alone out there. Yeah. I had yeah. forgotten I have someone on my belay line, right? I have someone on my, yeah. on my safety line. And so then it was like, oh, I'm not alone. And then it was, she shouts, are you on the ground? I haven't got control over you anymore. And then it was fear again because I wasn't on the ground. Oh, my God. Right? And then I realized I'm doing it. Yeah. Right? I, with my little stubby yeah. left stub and my, my one finger, appendage on the right longer arm was managing those repel lines enough that I could pause. I controlled that fearful pause. Yeah. Not yeah. them. I was doing it. But I wasn't doing it alone. Yeah. She yeah. had my back. I wouldn't have been hanging out there doing my all yeah. without my safety yeah. line, without that person on my repel line. Well, and, and so and you not only hung there but you actually successfully continued forward. Not only were I, you frozen in fear, but you actually pushed yourself to get out of yeah. the ground. Yeah. And so earning independence, you know, in, in Unstoppable You, I talk about exceed your uncertainty, yeah. right? Just because uh -huh. I was falling out of the boat doesn't mean you're doing things without fear. You're doing it in spite yeah. of fear. Courage is in spite yeah. of fear. So you exceed uncertainty and you just climb back in that boat and you embrace possibility even when you're wiping out in the trees or you don't know how you're going to launch. You don't know how you're going to do it. Yeah. And and like that yeah. football player is what what is the journey? What is that path? And you don't know what it is, but how you get there 
24 seven, making it happen. And you start and you get off the couch anyway, even though you don't know how, yeah. and you, yeah. you just keep going. Failure doesn't mean you stop trying. Yeah. Failure yeah. is only when you stop trying, right? Exactly. Walt did nine times bankrupt. He just did it one more time and he became the famous Walt Disney. So success is just somebody that tried one more time. I got up on that ski hill one more time. Yeah, and absolutely. And I think people, like, it's so important to hear that. Like, uh, it's uh, Let me just close off the story if I could. So exceed uncertainty, embrace possibility, and earn independence. But earning independence isn't alone. Right? Who is your lifeline? Who are you surrounding yourself with? And so it doesn't mean better, smarter. It just who is that lifeline? Who has your back? Yeah. Yeah. And surround yourself with those people. Yeah. So that's the exceed uncertainty, embrace possibility, earn independence, limitless secret of unstoppable you. Awesome. And so if people want to hire you, how do they do that? Where do they go? I am unstoppable Tracy everywhere. And I'm so unstoppable that the word unstoppable has two P's in it, right? It's such a crazy word that it has two P's. Unstoppable with two P's. I want to show you two. And I'm like, oh, I got to wait. Wait a sec. We'll put, it's not impossible. I just put on another finger and say two P's. <laughs> two P's. I'm throwing out a funny spatula, Trevor. And Tracy, I'm no arms, no legs, I like to joke, and no E in Tracy. No extra parts on my body and no extra letters in my name. <laughs> Stoppable Tracy, T-R-A-C-Y, all one word. And I that's my website, Unstoppable Tracy. That's Facebook, that's Twitter, that's Instagram, that's Google Plus, that's my YouTube channel, that's Pinterest. It's everywhere, Unstoppable Tracy. Or if you just do hashtag Unstoppable Tracy, and you'll find a link to the book, Unstoppable You Book. Okay. And okay. it's a free download in in the book. So what the coach taught me, another story we didn't get to finish, was that it's not about sharing the stories. It's about what when I started to listen to people, what they really wanted, right, was also some of that, as you say, how do they hire you? They wanted that self-coaching. Yeah. So it's not yeah. just sharing a story about backwards boots. At the end of that chapter, I ask you, Things like what's, what's worked for you in the past? What didn't work for you? Knowing that, what are you going to do going forward? Mm -hmm. Right? Like those are just three questions in one chapter. And every chapter yeah. has questions for you to self-reflect on so that you can self-drive yourself forward. So you can hear yourself. You might not be a four-way amputee, but you can hear yourself and how to drive forward to be unstoppable too at the end of every chapter. Uh, but I would love to be part of leadership training with you, Lisa, because you're a phenomenal success right along with me. And that's who I like to surround myself with is people like Lisa. And so well, I'm, and I'm, I'm just a stubble jumper from Saskatchewan, girl. And you're a girl from Ontario. Two Canadian ladies just trying to make our way. Yeah. And make a difference for others to help you make your way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you, Tracy, for joining us today. And uh, again, everybody, unstoppabletracy.com. Two Ps, no E. <laughs> and take care. Bye for now. Thank you.